Oh my god, you guys. There is so much stuff around me, it's not even funny. Um, March has been a month. March has been a month. Um, yeah, strap in. This is going to be a long video. March has been very productive and busy for me. A lot of stuff has happened. And um, I have been enjoying a lot of things. So yeah, let's, let's just get right into it. Um, the first favorite that I have for March 2019 is my new Bo Horvat Canucks jersey, which I got at a real in-person Canucks game. Um, so you guys may not already know this, uh, but um, my husband and I our anniversary is on the 23rd of March and we've now been married for six years. We've been together 10 years this year, which is crazy. And um, we uh, try on the weekend of our anniversary to, or the closest one to it, to go away for the weekend. Um, one to two days. My parents usually watch the kids for us because it's almost guaranteed that they can. And we just try to chill and have fun and do things outside of our normal schedule. Um, we try to do things that we would struggle to do with the kids either because of their age or because of the cost involved. And um, so yeah, this year we went and stayed in Vancouver about a block from Rogers Arena and we saw the Canucks play the Calgary Flames. They lost unfortunately three to one but we did get to see them score a goal. Um, my Bo Horvat got I think it, uh, the assist in that goal too so he got a point and um, yeah we just we enjoyed ourselves and we had um, we walked around Vancouver a bit um, and then on the Sunday we went to uh, Fort Langley as well. So we did some shopping around in um, the historic downtown Fort Langley and then we had pizza at this authentic Italian pizza place that actually cooks the pizzas in like a uh, real wood fire oven and the pizza was amazing um, it was so delicious we just had like a straight margarita pizza um, so it's just a really good quality tomato sauce fresh basil leaves and then fresh mozzarella and the crust is just it, you can't even describe how good it is and it's thin and it's kind of like foldy and yet towards the end there's more like towards the edges there's more structure and oh and then I had my first ever um, uh, cannoli as well. I've never had a cannoli. Um, and I have always wanted to have like a really good authentic one, not like the cheap ones that are made in like grocery store bakeries and stuff like that. I've always wanted to have a real authentic cannoli because they've always just looked to die for. And so my husband and I each got a cannoli. It was delicious. It was so good. And I can totally understand now why people love them so much. So that is what we did. Um, and I, um, I felt really bad leaving for the weekend because my youngest daughter was actually sick with the cold that I now have. Thanks, honey. Um, but she did really well. She, um, kind of was upset when we left on the Saturday, um, but by the time she woke up on Sunday morning, her fever had broken. She was in much brighter spirits. She was much happier to be there with her grandma and her tide, and she didn't even really miss us all that much uh, on the starting on the Sunday. Saturday was a bit of a different story. She was very distraught that we weren't there, but um, on the Sunday, she could not have cared less so this video you're unfortunately going to be broken up a little bit as I blow my nose a lot. Um, I'm sorry it can't be helped. This is just one of those colds. And then we'll get into the rest of my favorite things starting now. 
Okay, so one of the first things that I usually do is books. So um, I think what I'm actually going to do this time around is because there's so much stuff that's not necessarily spirituality related, I think I'm going to do decks, crystals, um, any other uh, spiritual things, and then we'll go with books and assorted other things. So um, yeah, so decks... I've been working primarily with um, three tarot decks. One of them is the Druid Craft. Um, I have not so far like I thought I would be um, delved into using my German version of it as much. I've mostly been using this deck for personal draws um, and I've been kind of squeezing them in uh, last minute, especially the last two weeks as my kids have been home on spring break. It's been a lot more uh, busy around the house here than it typically is. I get a little less quiet time because, you know, with three kids, that means that they're fighting over who gets to have the TV, who gets to play video games, who gets to pick a show. So it's not like during the week when my kids are at school and I can take my time to do my daily draws because the kids are, you know, the two older ones are in school and then the younger one I can set her up with the show or with some Play-Doh or something like that and keep her occupied. So, yeah, um, the last couple of weeks especially, my daily draws have been short and sweet. So mostly been using um, the Druid Craft. I've also been using, surprise, surprise, the Crow Tarot. Um, I did a full unboxing and flip through of this deck, which I will put in the cards up here quite recently. And yeah, it did a, um, it's a fantastic deck. I absolutely freaking love it. And uh, I've now, um, today, as of today, I've used it for my first client reading. Um, and I've also been using the Ostara Tarot. I'm sure that this one is pretty obvious. Um, it's it's a very easy deck to pick around Ostara and definitely was the case for me this year as well. This deck is really beautiful. It's really lovely. I mean, I do use it year round. Pardon me. Um, but uh, definitely it does come out a little bit more at Ostara as well. And the deck, um, the Oracle deck I've been primarily focusing on is the Voice of the Trees Oracle by Mickey Mueller. Um, I have been dedicating a little bit more time to learning the OM system. I have been, um, each time I note down my daily draws, I have been um, like drawing the OM and I've been taking a minute to pronounce the Gaelic name of the uh, of the OM tree properly because thankfully that companion book does give you the pronunciation so I've been trying my best to remember both the Gaelic as well as the English and then what the symbol is. I wouldn't say I'm an expert in OM but I definitely am getting much more familiar with it now. And then um, as far as um, other spiritual things I've really been loving. One of them has been this Flore Jasmine incense. I would absolutely purchase this again. This was divine. It, I don't know if it was the fact that it's spring now here or I was burning it when I wanted it to feel like spring, um, but this incense was absolutely lovely. I know it comes in cones as well, I'm actually going to see if I can order directly from the company online or if I can find a good supplier of them online because this was absolutely divine and um, there's a local New Age store that carries some of their stuff but I don't like to support them if I don't have to because I recently found out that uh, the owner pretty much only stocks anything witchy because it brings in profit. Um, she's more in line with like the Buddhist and yoga and Eastern philosophies and she really wants to try to encourage those items to sell more. Um, but because there's a lot of people like myself in the area, she does stock some other things that um, 
she knows will sell just to make money and she's actually kind of said about people like me behind our backs to some of the people who've worked there which i have happened to have known that um she doesn't like witches she doesn't like pagans she thinks we're all terrible and stupid and awful and um she would really rather that we all this like went over to eastern philosophies instead so she could stop selling the shit that we like and i was like Good to know. Good to know. Well, I'm sure there are other shops in my area that feel very differently than you about us. So I'm going to go there instead. And sure enough, there are. There's one um, in the city, uh, one city over from me that is absolutely wonderful. And I, the girl, the lady who owns it and runs it is an absolute joy to deal with, as is the gentleman who usually works on the weekends. So um, I've been going there instead when I've needed some witchy things, but thankfully I haven't needed very much um, for quite a while. So, um, but I will see if I can order when I get lower on my other incenses. I'm going to see if I can order directly from Flore and see if I can stock up on a couple of my favorites. Um, that's pretty much the only incense I've really been like die hard loving. The other incenses that I've chosen to burn have been primarily to help me focus in on specific energies for readings for clients. Um, so I haven't necessarily been going to them because I found them particularly really lovely at that moment. It's more been, okay, I'm going to do a messages from the Morgan reading. So I'm going to use a Morgan themed incense. Um, I'm doing this earthy reading. So I'm going to use this, uh, sandalwood incense or something to that effect. Uh, something else I've really been loving is um, a candle that my dear friend Ty made for me and sent in my Christmas package. And uh, you will have seen pictures of it a lot over the last few weeks, um, months even, on my Instagram. It was this beautiful light blue color, um, had a snowflake and ribbon on it at one point. I have completely burned it. This is literally all that remains of it now. Um, it, like even through my stuffed nose, I can smell it. It smells amazing. Ty, I do not know what you put in it, but holy cannoli, it smells so amazing. My only complaint is that I wish I had known how soft it was because if I had when I'd start burning it, I would have put it in one of those big glass jars so that it could have all like smushed together and it could have lasted longer but I didn't know it I thought it was harder than that and um, so unfortunately it probably didn't last nearly as long as it could have but oh it was so so good while it lasted um, I dedicated it specifically to working with the goddess Bridget so I only burned it when I was doing Bridget readings working with her doing ritual kind of thing um, and it still just went so fast. Um, another candle I totally finished up is the Crow Sight candle from uh, Joey Morris of Starry Eyed Supplies. Um, I purchased this myself months ago. I basically was burning this one every time I did a messages from the Morrigan reading for clients or if I was doing ritual um, invoking the Morrigan for myself. Um, it's absolutely beautiful. I will repurchase this at some point um, along with Joey's newest book and probably stock up on some of her incense and stuff as well. It was lovely. The last candle I've really been loving is not spiritual. It's just uh, one I, I burn by my bedside. I haven't finished using it yet, um, but it's called Midnight Blue Citrus White Barn Scented Candle. I got this from Bath and Body Works, and I absolutely adore the scent. So this is a three wick candle. It burns so nicely and clean. Like, look, all the wax like it's not even solidifying along the sides of the glass which is so cool because I will be able to reuse this jar um, when the candle is done. I actually at the same time purchased um, a foaming hand soap from them in the same 
uh, scent and I love it. I, I, the next time I am in a Bath and Body Works, I am buying another one of these candles. I will probably buy like three of these candles. They're so beautiful. And I love that the jar really matches the decor in my house as well. So the last of the spiritual things before we get into everything else has been uh, crystals. And I've had the same three crystals under my pillow for a while now. I think I'm going to um, switch them out today now that spring is fully in session. I really wanted to connect myself with the earth and with the earthy, earthly kind of energies when I felt like spring was just not quite coming through. So I had malachite, a tree or moss agate, I don't know which one this is, and then also a labradorite to help with um, like prophetic dreams and things like that. These three have been lovely, but I do feel like it's time to move on to other crystals. So that is what I am indeed going to do after I finish filming. And the other crystal that I've really been loving, I also got um, while we were on our anniversary trip, we went to Granville Island in Vancouver to this beautiful store called the Crystal Ark. If you're ever in Vancouver, if you've never been, you must go. Granville Island, the Crystal Ark. And this is an Argonite. And I have no idea what it's supposed to do, what the energies are. I just loved it. It's so beautiful, it's so unique to anything that I have. It almost looks like these bits are growing on some granite or something like that, I don't know. I need to research this crystal, but it's beautiful. And these little bits almost grow in like little mini pillars, if you see what I mean. It's just so cool. I, I absolutely was stunned by it. I've, I've heard of Argonite, I don't know if I ever saw a piece before, um, but once I saw it in the store, it was like, yeah, you're, you're coming home with me. As I take a sip of tea to help my throat, let's get into books. So the first is nonfiction books and there's two. Um, first I finished reading The Witch by Ronald Hutton. I read this for my February and March book club selection that I have on Facebook. Link is below if you'd like to join our group. It's totally free. It's no pressure. We tend to do one book a month or in a case like this, something very academic, very thick and very, um, it, it's it's not an easy reader. I, It's a bit dry at times. Um, but it is a good book. It's very informative. So with a book like this, we decided to take our time and read it over the course of two months. And I really think that that was wise. It is a very good book, but as I said, it's not an easy reader. This is not a page turner. This is one that you are gonna have to plunk yourself down and discipline yourself to keep reading because it's just not easy. Um, but if you are looking to learn more about uh, history of European witchcraft, uh, history of worldwide witchcraft, how it's been received, uh, all that kind of stuff, then that book is a very good choice um, to make. I thought I would continue along a similar vein after I finished that one and finish reading a book I had started last summer, which is The Black Arts, A Concise History of Witchcraft, Demonology, Astrology, Alchemy, and Other Mystical Practices Throughout the Ages by Richard Cavendish. This is the updated version, the 40-year anniversary edition. I think that calling it The Black Arts is a misnomer. Um, however, I will give the title credit in one category. Um, this is supposed to be like a historical book, and historically, people would have considered witchcraft and anything occult to be a black art. Um, but if you are hoping that this entire book is basically going to be a grimoire on how to conjure necromancy and other black arts, you are going to be sorely disappointed. This is more of a historical book, um, but it is not a how-to. It is not an instructive book. It is informative. It is easier to read than Ronald Hutton's um, witchcraft works, uh, but I would say less academically 
um, informative than his stuff. I, I wouldn't... I struggle because I don't want to say I don't recommend this book because it was really interesting in some parts of it. But there were some parts that I just skipped altogether, like the part on um, mostly the Kabbalah and Gematria. Um, I w didn't really care about... Um, I didn't really care about the uh, numerology section either. And while I did find the bit that was on astrology a bit helpful and informative, um, it also wasn't like a really great beginner's guide to astrology either. I just think that you're going to know if you've been reading about witchcraft in any way or if you've been reading about witchcraft history or if you've been reading about astrology or Kabbalah or anything like that, even on a, a low level, this book probably isn't going to tell you a crazy amount that you don't already know. Um, it does have some historical references in it. It just didn't wow me. It, it just, yeah, it just didn't wow me. Um, at times I thought it gave way too much information about some subjects and then was disappointingly vague and um, shallow in other subjects. So it just wasn't really consistent and I, I struggled to I struggled to find a good reason why I should even continue reading it. So it's not a favorite, um, but I am glad I read it. We'll go with that. Um, fiction, these are all favorites. These are all true favorites. First is um, a follow-up to the All Souls trilogy by Deborah Harkness. This is Time's Convert. I borrowed this one from the library. Freaking amazing. Page Turner. If you liked any of the books from the All Souls trilogy um, that she wrote uh, the first time around, you must read this. It is so cool. It picks up shortly after where um, the Book of Life leaves off. Um, but instead of following really closely with Diana and Matthew, it follows more closely with Phoebe and Marcus, including Phoebe's change into a vampire. Oh my god, it was so good! I don't usually read vampire fiction. I'm not a big... Um, I'm not really into that. I've never read like Twilight and stuff like that. It, vampire fiction just doesn't really do it for me. Um, but because the All Souls trilogy was much more focused on witchcraft and even though it was more fantastical witchcraft than practical, I still found it really interesting. And there was enough of all of that stuff going on in um, Time's Convert to be able to keep me going. Um, although I did find the way that they talked about the vampire stuff here a really fascinating as well. And it also has a lot of historical references in it um, to European attitudes towards things like witchcraft and also um, American attitudes towards it from the uh, colonial perspective. Very cool. Very cool. So that part of it really kept me reading. Um, this one I actually purchased after I saw Katie Flowers talk about it on her channel. This is months and months and months ago. It is Turtles All the Way Down by John Green. I bought it when I was at a bookstore and it had like a lovely little 40% off uh, sticker because they were clearing out the hard covers before the soft covers came out. And it was really, it really intrigued me how she talked about it. I didn't even remember what she had said about it um, and when I got sick on Thursday I decided screw it I'm gonna pick this up and I'm gonna start reading. I didn't pick this up until Thursday afternoon and by Friday afternoon-ish I'd already finished it. Um, this is from the same author who did um, The Faults in Our Stars. I haven't read that or any other of his books. Um, I'd probably be interested in reading some of his other works at some point in the future because I loved this one so much. Basically, it is the story of a young girl, a teenager, who has um, an issue with um, like mental health. And basically, she gets trapped in her own thoughts. Uh, they're almost like obsessive-compulsive, I'm going to guess. They never really say specifically 
what she has. Um, I would guess somewhere in there, maybe some obsessive compulsive disorder. I'm not sure. Um, but it was really interesting. And along the way, they actually kind of solve a mystery. But that is a very low level factor in this book. Very good. Very good. I finished it, like I said, in roughly 24 hours. So that should tell you how much I loved it. And then we also have one I have just started to um, try to read again. Um, I'm not super far into it, um, but I am really enjoying it so far. And it is American Gods by Neil Gaiman. I tried reading this book at one point. I probably got a little bit more than like a quarter, maybe a third of the way through it. And then something happened where I put it down and I stopped reading, even though I really loved it. And um, I ended up loaning out to my father. So I removed my bookmark and then I said to myself, eventually I'm going to read this book again. And so I have started it again. I'm only on page 92 of the mass market paperback um, version and really loving it so far. Really good getting myself reacquainted with this story and also picking up on a couple of details at the beginning here that I did miss the first time around. It's very good so far. I have read um, a few of Neil Gaiman's other books, so I already know that I'm probably really going to like it. And I would like to start watching the show at some point, too. All right, then we have miscellaneous stuff. So, the first thing that I have is a movie that I've watched recently. I actually purchased this. This is Mary Queen of Scots. It has um, Sirois Ronan. I pretty sure that's wrong, but she played Agatha in, um, oh, the Grand Budapest Hotel. Um, and I loved that movie. That was so good. It was kind of like Monty Python humor, but highbrow. It was so good. If you haven't seen, um, if you haven't seen the Grand Budapest Hotel, you need to see it. Is this a weird, kind of kitschy little movie, but it's so cute. Um, and it also has Margot Robbie in it. So, um, Soroy's, I'm so sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. Um, she plays Mary Queen of Scots. Margot plays Queen Elizabeth I. Um, this movie didn't tell me anything I didn't already know about Mary Queen of Scots. I have watched numerous documentaries about her. She's a fascinating uh, woman in history, and I have always found her story very intriguing, as well as that of Elizabeth I, to be perfectly honest. Um, but it was a really nice, dramatic, you know, version of... Um, I, would you call this like a... Would you call this like a dramatic... Um, like historical reenactment. I don't know. I don't know. But it was good. It was really good. And I bought it because I knew I was going to want to watch it over and over again. And at some point, I will. As well as Mary Queen of Scots, I've also really been enjoying the series that I have found on YouTube with the same, like, two to three people running through them. One of them is the Tudor Monaster... Uh, Monastery Farm. Uh, another is the um, Wartime Farm. The I'm now in the Victorian Farm, and then there was also one um, where they are um, they were living and helping to build um, a castle that is being. It's like a 25 year um, living history project where they basically build a castle from scratch using all authentic period techniques, tools, um, labor, all that kind of stuff. The only things that they are doing that are slightly different is they are wearing like some modern hard hats. Um, they're supplementing some bolts instead of wooden pegs for things like scaffolding just to be on the safe side. Um, but almost entirely the laborers work and live and dress like the people who would have built a traditional Norman castle um, 
and it, it was just fascinating. So I am going to find um, the first video in each series for those that I've really enjoyed, and I'm gonna pop them into the description below. Um, because basically once you start watching the first one, if you wanna continue watching on YouTube, it almost always takes you to the next one in order. So I will pop the links to those um, in the description box. And I'm gonna continue with the Victorian farm later today after I finish filming and editing and uploading this. So there's two items I bought um, when we were at the historical shopping um, center in Fort Langley for our anniversary. And one of them was this really beautiful um, antique sweets tin. This was manufactured by Claren Co. Um, it was made in England, so this is an English um, confectionery company, and this tin is just lovely, isn't it? Um, it's even got like an original sticker on the bottom. I'm not sure from what time or anything like that. Um, this wasn't very much. This was, I think, about $7 Canadian. Um, and then I actually use it to hold some of my little um, cone incense that I have. Um, I love little vintage things like this. And this just, I had outgrown the box that I was previously using for cone incense. They were just not staying in there properly. And this looked to be just the right size. And it's just got such a nice feel to it. I also, from the same antique store, purchased a teacup and saucer from a Royal Albert China um, collection. This is the Lord Nelson Ware version of it. Um, this is made in England. It's fine bone china and um, it's the pansy print. I absolutely adore this collection. I have seen numerous pieces from it along the way and I've never purchased any of it um, before. This is the most I've ever spent on a teacup and saucer set ever. Um, and I don't care. <laughs> I've already used it once. I definitely intend to use it again. I do like to collect antique teacups and saucers and teapots and stuff, but I've been very careful not to add much to my collection over the years because I don't, A, I don't want it to get too big, and B, I don't want to drop tons of money on something that I don't use very often. But every once in a while you see a piece and you know you just have to have it. And it's this beautiful bluey purples. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. And it completely and utterly appealed to me on so many levels. Speaking of tea, I have... Um, teas that I have really been uh, loving and enjoying. So I have two from David's Tea. Uh, one is my favorite David's Tea of all time, um, and this is the Cream of Earl Grey. I have been drinking this more than usual lately. Um, it is black tea, cornflowers, marigolds. It has things like bergamot flavoring. Um, there's some vanilla in here, of course, because it's a Cream of Earl Grey. It just, it smells so lovely, it tastes so lovely, and I have mine quite strong with a splash of milk. I've also, because of this cold, I decided to finally try their cold 911 blend. So this is a mix of peppermint, juniper, orange, there's eucalyptus flavoring in here as well, and a little bit of apple for some taste. Um, this cold 911 blend, let me tell you, this is divine. This is so good. Um, it is an organic tea as well, which is really great, uh, certified as well. And you really get hit with the eucalyptus smell when you open it up. And it, um, it just kind of helps to really, you can really feel the eucalyptus going through your palate when you're drinking it and really opening your sinuses up. I breathe so much better after I have a cup of, like during and after I breathe, um, I have a cup of this. 
and the last tea I've been enjoying has been this Restful Sleep Blend by Yogi Tea. It has valerian, chamomile, passion flower, skullcap, um, because they have all been traditionally used as sleep aids. But it also has uh, spearmint, licorice root, which is a really good, um, like a liver cleanser, which is really great for you to have um, before bed. Um, lemongrass, uh, lavender flowers, peppermint leaf. Ugh, it's it, it. It's not my favorite tasting tea, but damn, does it ever do what it says it's going to do. I drink a cup of this um, before I go to bed on any nights when I feel like I might have more trouble than usual falling asleep. And I find that I tend to fall asleep faster and I just tend to sleep a little bit more deeply and a little bit better with this. Um, sleep is not typically an issue for me, but the last couple of months or so, things have been kind of out of whack as kids have moved through various illnesses and things like that. And I found that it was really throwing my biological clock off. I was going to bed later and later, having trouble waking up and getting up in the morning. And I decided that I needed to try something natural and easy to kind of get myself back into the groove. I didn't want to use sleep medications or anything like that if possible. The last thing, guys, we are at the last thing, the last favorite for the month of March. Um, you may remember, if you follow me on Instagram, me saying and showing that I had um, gotten to go to a dyeing class for yarn, um, and I have the finished product here. So... This is my yarn. This is dyed on a bulky weight. It is a superwash wool. I think it's got nylon in it too. And um, so this um, yarn shop that I went to is my local yarn shop. And um, they have been asked numerous times when they're going to start offering dyeing workshops. And they really wanted to give it a try with some people that they knew first, kind of make it easy and comfortable and, you know, kind of get the hang of it first before they went into actually um, uh, offering the classes. So uh, the owner and the employee are friends of mine and a couple of our other friends also joined in on the dying class. And... Um, the basically their their thing was um, whoever dyes the most beautiful skein of yarn, we are going to make that our April um, uh, yarn club of the month uh, colorway. So we had to write down our processes and stuff. And my friend actually won. Uh, hers was beautiful and she ended up calling it Starry Starry Night and her colors were inspired by um, her wedding bouquet. Beautiful colorway. There's some yellow and some navy and a little bit of purple in there and it's just oh it's so gorgeous. However they have a rule that if um, any yarn that they dye for their yarn club that they have every month cannot be sold as its own colorway if it if it is really beautiful and is really loved um, for at least three months after it's released. That way only people with the, the club access get to, to use it for a while. They did not want to have to put their restrictions on that colorway because it was so beautiful. So uh, they are actually going to be making hers a permanent colorway. Mine won the runner up! So this is going to be, or very close to this, um, is going to be the colorway for the month of April, which is so cool. So I call this Lilacs in Wisteria Lane. It just looked so beautiful and bluey and purpley, and then there's these little magenta specks. So yeah, I'm super, super excited that I'm gonna basically get another, uh, like a sock weight version of this next month as well. I'm very touched. I'm very touched, very excited. So there you go, guys. There is my long list of favorites this month. 
I hope that you enjoyed this video and please let me know what some of your favorites have been for the month of March in the comments below. I always love hearing from you guys what you've been enjoying and um, if you kind of vibe with some of the things that I've been enjoying or if you've read some of the same books, seen some of the same shows or movies or whatever. And yeah, I love hearing from you. So until next time, guys, take care and blessed be.